Everyone has a different method for the process of taking the photo to handing the photo to the client. I'm going to tell you what I do. As soon as possible, when I'm done with the shoot, I get the photos transferred to my computer. I leave the photos on my memory cards until I'm sure everything was transferred to the computer okay and backed up properly. This way, I always have two live copies of my images. I never leave anything to chance. Um, I don't like to have only one copy. In fact, even for um, super serious stuff, with cameras like the D300S and the D7000 and the D3 series, you can have the camera write to two memory cards simultaneously, so you have a backup immediately. By the way, I have a video showing how I currently organize and back up my files. Here's the link to that. But back to the topic at hand. So, after I have the files on my computer, I need to get them into my photo editing software. I use a few different pieces of software. Um, I go through phases with each of them. I use Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, and Aperture. Currently, I'm using Aperture almost exclusively. Why? Because I love it. <laughs> it helps me to perform great edits without complexity and at a high rate of speed. And time is money, right? To get my photos into Aperture, I open the software and import the files. Aperture has a neat feature where you can choose to store the files in their original location rather than creating a copy of the image files. Also, the edits in Aperture stay in Aperture until you export the file, meaning that you can alter your images in Aperture without changing the original file. I like that. I like that a lot. I know many of you use Lightroom, and I assume it is much the same in that regard. Okay, um, I point Aperture to the files and create a project. Depending on the size of the shoot, I might create more than one project. Uh, for example, if I'm editing a wedding, I have three sections of photos. I have ceremony, reception, and other, which I will make into their own projects. It makes editing a little easier to swallow for me that way. Next, I need to narrow the many, many files down to the ones I want to edit or at least the ones that I want to entertain the idea of editing. I make an initial pass through the images and delete the ones I don't want out of Aperture. Remember, this is not actually deleting the file, it's just narrowing down what I see in my Aperture project. I like to do a preliminary sweep through the photos to get rid of any of them that are just obviously bad. Um, you know what I mean, like test shots, ones where the person is blinking, and not the ones where the brides are, you know, their eyes are passionately closed or anything. I mean the ones that are more like this. You know what I'm talking about. So, like I said, even though I'm deleting the image in Aperture, the image files stay in their original locations. You don't need to freak out or anything. I'm not deleting original files. <laughs> I just don't have to see them anymore when I'm editing. Now I have a good idea of the images I have on hand because I've glanced through them already. And so I can go in and really decide what I want to do. I usually work in sections or batches, I guess you'd call them. Um, I guess I should mention here that um, I make sure that my images are organized by date and time. Before I even start shooting, I actually make sure my cameras and my assistant's cameras are synced up with the same date and time, so when I organize the files, they just all fall into line. Then when I'm editing, I can look at similar moments, regardless of which camera took the shot. So, I just move through the images and start editing. In Aperture, I can create multiple versions of the same image, so if I want to do a couple different crops or effects on an image, I can just create more than one version in the software. Now, I know you're asking, what edits do you make, and what is the style of your edits? If you have seen some of the shots on my Facebook page, you know I'm not into the most crisp, technically sound images. I like a lot of high contrast black and white, and I'm definitely not afraid of low contrast or image grain. So. Using my own style, evaluating the images, and taking into account the desires of the customer, I use my own judgment. Some people want something a little more edgy than others, so it is extremely important to have a clear vision of what the client wants well in advance of the shoot. And you definitely want to make sure that what they are looking for and what you provide are compatible. <laughs> okay, back to processing. When I'm done, I can select all of the images that I think the client is going to love and export the whole lot of them at once with whatever settings I need. I usually like to include uh, a favorites or top five or even top ten folder for my clients, so I usually do that next. 
This helps to steer them towards the images that I think are the strongest, and hopefully if I've spent enough time with them up front, I have guessed which ones that they will absolutely love too. Next, I need to burn the work onto disk because I always provide di digital images rather than prints. Now, the disk versus prints debate is a topic for another video entirely. <laughs> I burn my disk, or disks as the case may be, and I send it out to the client, and I usually send them an email or give them a call to let them know that it's on its way. So like I said before, there are countless ways to organize your workflow, but this is how I roll. Let me know if you have any questions.